Chapter 2. Lenin and Stalin. Lenin. Comparison between Russia and Germany. Stalin draws a parallel between the revolutionary conditions in Russia during Lenin's time and Germany during Marx's time. In the mid-19th century, Germany was on the verge of a bourgeois revolution, similar to Russia in the early 20th century. Marx's Prediction for Germany Marx predicted that Germany's bourgeois revolution would be the precursor to a proletarian revolution, due to its advanced proletariat compared to England in the 17th century and France in the 18th century. Significance of Russia's Revolution Russia's conditions were seen as even more progressive than Germany's, with a more developed proletariat, which would make Russia the center of the revolutionary movement. Lenin predicted in what is to be done. 1902 that the Russian Revolution would propel the Russian proletariat to the forefront of the global revolutionary movement. Fulfillment of Lenin's Prediction Stalin asserts that the revolution in Russia ultimately confirmed Lenin's prediction, solidifying Russia as the leader of the international proletariat revolution. Marx and Engels on the Russian Revolution Marx and Engels were deeply interested in and supportive of the potential revolutionary movement in Russia. They corresponded extensively about Russia's revolutionary potential, especially expressing joy at the formation of the Emancipation of Labor Group, which introduced Marxism to Russia. Criticism of Utopian Populists Marx and Engels sharply criticized the Utopian populists for their lack of understanding of economic and political development, unlike the Marxist approach which accurately applied Marxist theory to Russian conditions. Engels praised for Plekhanov, Engels praised Russian Marxists like Plekhanov for adopting Marxist economic and historical theory and breaking from previous populist and Slavophile traditions. Lenin's Dedication to Revolutionary Theory Lenin, from a young age, committed himself to revolutionary activity by deeply studying Marxist theories and applying them to the specific economic and political conditions of Russia. V.I. Lenin's Revolutionary Preparation Lenin's early revolutionary preparation was marked by a rejection of traditional populist methods, choosing instead to adopt Marxist tactics that would lead the working class to victory in Russia. Study of Marx and Engels For Lenin, studying Marxism was not just theoretical but involved deeply analyzing Russia's specific economic and political conditions alongside the global labor movement, allowing him to develop practical, revolutionary tactics. Self-discipline and diligence Lenin demonstrated exceptional self-discipline in every task he undertook. His biographers attribute this to both his upbringing and his personal commitment to revolutionary goals. Like Marx, Engels, and Stalin, Lenin set heroic goals for himself and persistently worked to develop the qualities necessary for leadership. Commitment to work Lenin, like other Marxist thinkers, showed a high sense of duty and responsibility toward the working class. His immense knowledge and skills were not just a result of his genius but also his tireless efforts and disciplined work ethic. Independent Study Habits Lenin developed the habit of independent reading and studying from an early age. He would discard activities like skating and chess if they interfered with his studies. He learned foreign languages, focusing on those most relevant to his revolutionary work, such as German for reading Marx in the original language. Systematic Work Method Lenin's school habits included creating detailed outlines and plans for his essays, which allowed him to work efficiently over time. This systematic approach stayed with him throughout his life, as he carefully planned and prepared all his work. Organizational Skills Lenin was highly organized in his work, especially in collecting and preparing materials for his projects. His personal library and archives were meticulously organized, and he always had the necessary resources at hand especially during his work in exile or difficult conditions. Work Environment Lenin's office in the Kremlin was designed for efficiency, with all the materials and references he needed for leadership and revolutionary tasks at arm's reach, minimizing time spent searching for information. Memory and Knowledge Retention Lenin's memory was extraordinary, allowing him to recall not only books he had read, but also specific articles and details even without access to reference materials in challenging conditions. He developed this ability through persistence and regular training. Planning and Time Management Lenin strictly organized his time, making sure that every minute was used productively. He despised idle activities and ensured that his work hours were entirely dedicated to productive tasks. Note-taking and systematic learning From a young age, 
Lenin made detailed notes and extracts from books, magazines, and newspapers. He not only collected facts but also systematized and analyzed them, constantly revisiting them as new information emerged. This practice allowed him to draw historical conclusions and generalizations in his theoretical works. Broad learning. Even during intense revolutionary periods, Lenin continued studying various fields, including military strategy and modern technology, demonstrating his ability to connect diverse areas of knowledge with his revolutionary work. Lenin's critical approach to books. Lenin, like Marx, critically examined not just a book, but all its sources and the authors referenced within. He independently verified facts and conclusions presented by the book. Lenin emphasized a Marxist approach to evaluate the class positions of the author and whether they correctly presented facts. Books reflect the interests of their authors, who belong to different classes. A key Marxist ability is discerning the class interests behind an author's perspective, extracting valuable insights, and rejecting harmful, reactionary elements. Philosophical context. Lenin's work, particularly materialism and imperial criticism, is essential for understanding his approach to science and theory. Written during the Stalipin reaction post-1905 revolution, a period of reactionary disillusionment among intellectuals. During this period, criticism of Marxism became popular and pseudoscientific religious movements emerged to steer the masses away from revolutionary ideas. Intellectuals' attacks on Marxism. Certain intellectuals, Bogdanov, Bazarov, Lunacharsky, attacked dialectical materialism, claiming to defend Marxism but actually promoting a new religion. These intellectuals were influenced by the idealist philosophies of Mach and Avenarius, which they passed off as modern natural science. Lenin critiqued these intellectuals as degenerates who were fundamentally hostile to Marxism and the revolution. Lenin's Propagation of Dialectical Materialism Lenin consistently emphasized the importance of promoting dialectical materialism as a philosophy of modern natural science. He dedicated his life to mastering natural sciences, particularly physics, and to studying philosophers from ancient times to modernity. Lenin's vast knowledge allowed him to clearly explain dialectical materialism in simple, accessible language, especially for progressive workers. Combating Philosophical Degeneracy In his book, Lenin demonstrated that the degeneration of Russian matchists stemmed from their rejection of revolution and their lack of party spirit in theory. Lenin highlighted the dangers of ignorance and the inability to critically engage with theory and scientific data. He pointed out that many professors, despite valuable contributions to their fields, could not be trusted when it came to philosophy or political economy, as they represented class interests. Professors of economics, in particular, were seen as agents of the capitalist class. Role of Marxists Lenin argued that Marxists must learn to absorb useful knowledge from bourgeois academics but also to reject their reactionary tendencies. The task of Marxists is to pursue their own class line and fight against hostile forces and classes. Lenin rejected blind trust in written works and insisted on an uncompromising stance against deviations from Marxism. Key point on Marxism as working-class science. Marxism, as Stalin would later state, expresses the fundamental interests of the working class. Lenin persistently advocated for the defense of this science against any distortions or deviations. Lenin creatively perceived Marx's theory as a guide to action, emphasizing that every program should precisely reflect the actual process. Unlike populists, who began with utopias and lacked historical and economic understanding, Russian Marxists based their theory on thorough research of Russian history and reality. Lenin used statistics as a revolutionary tool turning the data gathered by his opponents, the Narodniks, against them, exposing their errors and deliberate manipulation. In his early work, What Are the Friends of the People and How Do They Fight the Social Democrats? Lenin highlighted that Russian Marxists stayed true to the realities of Russian socioeconomic conditions. Lenin meticulously studied the conditions of Russian peasants, gathering insights from personal interactions and analyzing their economic stratification just as Engels had studied workers in England. Through conversations with individuals like M. T. Elizarov, Lenin gained detailed knowledge of peasant life and economic stratification, often gathering first-hand insights from wealthy peasants. Lenin's work, The Development of Capitalism in Russia, combines statistical data with literary references to authors like Gleb Uspensky, 
Karolenko, and Maman Sibriak, showing his ability to use diverse sources for his analysis. Lenin also drew insight from fiction, especially from authors like Turgenev, whose depictions of Russian life informed Lenin's understanding of social relations. He never considered his knowledge final, constantly studying Marx and Engels and applying their ideas to Russian conditions. Lenin spent significant time in libraries, deepening his understanding of world revolutionary movements and the economic-political reality of Russia. One of Lenin's early works, on the so-called question of markets, laid the foundation for his later comprehensive study, The Development of Capitalism in Russia, which marked the ideological defeat of populism. Lenin's continued use of statistics and comprehensive research helped Russian Marxists in their struggle against Narodniks, proving the capitalist evolution of Russian society. The economic content of populism and its criticism in Mr. Struve's book, 1894-1895, Lenin wrote this large article as a key part of his work on the development of capitalism in Russia. It was a summary of his later economic works, including The Development of Capitalism in Russia. Based on a paper Lenin presented in 1894 to a group of St. Petersburg Marxists, the essay titled The Reflection of Marxism in Bourgeois Literature was aimed at criticizing Pyotr Struve, a representative of legal Marxists. Struve and others waged a struggle against populists but from a bourgeois liberal perspective, unlike Lenin's proletarian socialism approach. Lenin viewed the controversy with Struve as an instructive example of the importance of irreconcilable theoretical controversy. Theoretical struggle against bourgeois intellectuals Lenin was concerned with countering bourgeois intellectuals who aligned temporarily with the workers' movement under the guise of Marxism. These intellectuals were bourgeois Democrats transitioning from populism to liberalism rather than proletarian socialism, as Lenin and his followers advocated. Lenin emphasized the necessity of theoretical struggle to maintain the revolutionary path of the workers' movement. Preparation for the development of capitalism in Russia, 1894 to 1895, in parallel with his theoretical debates, Lenin worked intensively on his book, The Development of Capitalism in Russia. He spent long hours in libraries, collecting a vast amount of literature, including books, magazines, and catalogs. Lenin lived under severe financial constraints, economizing on everything except for books, which were essential for his work. Imprisonment and continued work, 1895 to 1896, Lenin was arrested in December 1895, but continued his work while imprisoned. In January 1896, he requested his books to be delivered to him in prison to continue his studies on markets. Lenin compiled a list of literature needed for his book, divided into two parts. Part A, general theoretical principles requiring fewer books but more preparatory work. Part B, application of theory to Russian conditions, requiring a large amount of literature, including Zemstvo and government publications. Lenin's sister, A. I. Yulianova, brought him stacks of books to prison, which he used to work on the development of capitalism in Russia. He was eager to finish his research, even lamenting that his imprisonment was ending too soon for him to complete his material collection. Exile concerns Lenin feared that once exiled, obtaining the necessary literature for his work would become extremely difficult. He worked intensively to gather as much information as possible before his exile. Lenin's emphasis on theoretical work in What are the Friends of the People? Lenin stresses the importance of theoretical work for the social democrats but clarifies that it should not come at the expense of practical work. Theoretical work serves as a guide to answer questions posed by practical activities. Priority of practical work Lenin asserts that practical work of propaganda and agitation must always take priority because it raises questions that theoretical work answers. Additionally, due to external circumstances like imprisonment and exile, social democrats often had no choice but to engage in theoretical work. Circumventing obstacles Lenin was adept at continuing both theoretical and practical work even in prison and exile. He found creative ways to produce and distribute propaganda such as writing in invisible ink in medical books and smuggling leaflets out of prison. Lenin's connection with workers. Lenin was deeply connected to the working class, participating in circles with advanced workers, gaining their respect, and sharing Marxist ideas with simplicity and clarity. His relationship with the workers extended beyond lectures. 
he involved them in agitational and organizational work. Educating workers, Lenin's teaching method focused on making complex Marxist ideas accessible. He encouraged debates, fostered independent thinking, and taught workers how to gather materials on factory life to produce propaganda leaflets. He approached his role as a propagandist with seriousness, ensuring that theory served as a practical tool for action. Personalized attention to students. Lenin took a personal interest in his students' development, studying their work conditions and using examples from their everyday lives. He worked hard to simplify Marxism, striving to make it understandable to every worker. He believed in the power of popular but rigorous writing, contrasting it with vulgar simplifications of socialist ideas. Lenin's demanding standards. Lenin was highly demanding, both of himself and his students, insisting on the importance of clarity in writing and speech. He held that propaganda should be both popular and profound, leading readers to think critically, rather than spoon-feeding them conclusions. Mentorship and lifelong influence. Lenin treated workers not as passive recipients of propaganda but as active comrades in the revolutionary struggle. His students, inspired by his dedication and teaching, became lifelong revolutionaries, loyal to Lenin's cause. Recollections of Lenin's students. Many of Lenin's early students, like Ivy Babushkin and V.A. Shelganov, recall their admiration for his intelligence, his insistence on independent thought, and the personal time he invested in educating them, even reading dense texts with them for hours. Lenin's simplicity in worker relations. Lenin engaged workers not by discussing high-level political or economic matters, but by connecting with them on a personal level, such as talking about their families, work environment, and daily challenges. He built these relationships with great simplicity, which was admired by many, including Shelganov, who remarked that no revolutionary of the time showed such ease in connecting with workers. Empowering workers as leaders, Lenin believed that workers should not only be involved in revolutionary work but should also become agitators and organizers themselves. He encouraged them to develop their political knowledge, take leadership roles, and actively engage with worker circles, as evidenced in his conversation with the worker Knyazev. Lenin emphasized the need for workers to read more, develop themselves, and work diligently to guide others. The importance of independent party workers. Lenin placed great value on developing independent, active party workers who could sustain the movement. He praised workers like I. V. Babushkin, who were instrumental in the creation of a workers' social democratic party. Lenin regarded Babushkin as a people's hero and emphasized that without such tireless workers, the party would not have survived even for ten months. Lenin's role in early worker circles Lenin led many worker circles during 1894 to 1895, personally guiding workers like Babushkin, who later spread revolutionary activities to other cities. His work in these early circles laid the foundation for broader organizational efforts across Russia. Lenin's approach to propaganda Lenin meticulously prepared his propaganda work, studying various sources and crafting his messages carefully. His first pamphlet, Explanation of the Law on Fines Levied on Workers in Factories and Plants, 1895, was designed to give workers all the necessary knowledge to understand fines and the related laws. The structure of the pamphlet reflected Lenin's thorough approach, breaking down complex issues into digestible sections with clear factual support. The Law on Fines pamphlet, Lenin's pamphlet on fines began by explaining basic concepts and then moved into detailed analysis. He used factual data from various sources, including historical strikes, the law itself, and official reports. The main conclusion, that the law was biased in favor of manufacturers, was supported by a wealth of evidence, allowing readers to draw the conclusion themselves. Scientific rigor in propaganda Lenin's work on the Fines pamphlet illustrated his commitment to scientific rigor and factual accuracy in his propaganda. He demanded this same level of conscientiousness from other propagandists. The Fines pamphlet, written in 1895, was an example of Lenin's broader organizational and theoretical work as he prepared for the creation of a Marxist workers' party. Connection with the masses Lenin's efforts in the mid-1890s were focused on building close ties with the masses. According to N.K. Krupskia, Lenin described this period as one of invisible, unnoticeable work, where the goal was not heroism but developing connections with the workers, understanding their aspirations, 
and becoming their voice. Faith in the masses. Lenin's belief in the creative powers of the proletariat was a defining characteristic of his leadership. Stalin later noted how Lenin rejected the notion of a revolutionary aristocracy that looked down on the masses. Instead, Lenin believed in learning from the masses and harnessing their revolutionary energy. Critique of revolutionary elitism. Lenin rejected the elitist approach of teaching the masses from a distance. He advocated for learning from their struggles and channeling their actions into organized revolution. His famous response to a comrade about establishing normal order after a revolution reflected his belief that revolution itself was the most natural order in history. Revolutionary Guidance Lenin's leadership style combined deep respect for the masses with a sharp critique of those who underestimated their capabilities. His ability to understand and direct mass movements played a crucial role in the success of the proletarian revolution. Stalin on Lenin's work style Stalin described Lenin's style as a combination of Russian revolutionary scope and American businesslike efficiency, as mentioned in his work on the foundations of Leninism. Lenin's working method Lenin's method in all fields of work reflected the approach Stalin mentioned, blending revolutionary breadth with meticulous, efficient execution. Scientific rigor in Lenin's work Lenin's scientific rigor is showcased in his major work, The Development of Capitalism in Russia. He aimed for an exhaustive analysis of Russian capitalism within certain limitations, internal market focus, post-reform era, purely Russian provinces, and economic aspects. Meticulous approach Lenin's work required independent analysis, statistical research, careful fact-gathering, and grouping of data to present a full, unbiased picture of the economic processes in Russia. Lenin's 1917 article on facts. In his unfinished article Statistics and Sociology, 1917, Lenin stressed the importance of exact facts and their interconnections rather than selecting individual facts arbitrarily, which could distort the truth. Challenges during exile. While in exile, Lenin faced immense difficulties gathering materials for his research. He began working on the development of capitalism in Russia, in prison and later continued in the village of Shushinskoy, Siberia. Limited resources. Without access to key resources and libraries, Lenin organized the delivery of books from St. Petersburg to his exile location, using personal networks and earning money by publishing articles. Strategies for collecting materials. Lenin meticulously arranged for books, catalogs, and statistical data to be sent to him. He also used private libraries in Siberia, like the Bibliophile Yudin's collection, to continue his research. Persistent correspondence for books. Lenin frequently wrote letters to his sisters, requesting books, subscriptions, and catalogs from bookstores and second-hand dealers. He often ordered literature through catalogs to stay informed about current developments in political economy and Marxism. Importance of timely access to books. Lenin viewed timely access to books as crucial for his work, going so far as to request partial payment for articles and books. Completion of the Development of Capitalism in Russia Despite the delays in receiving necessary materials, Lenin completed the book in 1898, demonstrating remarkable perseverance. He finished the first draft after receiving his box of books from St. Petersburg and spent additional months refining it for publication. Final Editing and Proofreading Lenin gave immense importance to technical aspects, especially proofreading, to ensure that the book would be error-free. He worked meticulously to simplify the content for a broader audience while maintaining scientific accuracy. Lenin's dedication to quality. His attention to detail in proofreading and technical correctness extended to all his work, including the publication of The Development of Capitalism in Russia, showing his relentless commitment to precision in revolutionary literature. Context and Setting during Lenin's exile, he wrote extensively on economic topics, particularly while working on the development of capitalism in Russia. These works were written under harsh conditions, including Tsarist prison and exile. Before receiving a box of books, Lenin had already written several important economic articles, which together formed a collection titled Economic Studies and Articles, 1899, consisting of 18 printed sheets. Key Work and Goals the main task Lenin set during this period was to study Russian reality through the lens of Marxist theory, particularly focusing on how production relations led to the exploitation and expropriation of workers. 
His goal was to disprove Russian populist arguments against the applicability of Marxist theory to Russia and to show how economic development pointed to a way out of this exploitative system. Agrarian Question One of the central issues Lenin focused on in the early 1900s was the agrarian question, which was hotly debated in both Russia and Western Europe. Lenin critiqued Russian socialist revolutionaries and former Marxists like Bulgakov and Maslov, who aligned with the criticisms of Marxism by Western European opportunists like Bernstein and Hertz. He thoroughly studied the agrarian question and wrote multiple theoretical works to defend revolutionary Marxism on this issue. Study of Agricultural Systems Lenin shifted from focusing on Russian agriculture to examining global agricultural trends under capitalism, particularly in countries like Germany, France, Belgium, and America. He used a meticulous approach, relying heavily on statistics and economic studies from both Russian and foreign sources to refute anti-Marxist theories about the stability of small peasant farming. Methodology Lenin developed his own system of data grouping, following Marx's instructions in Capital, which emphasized the need to account for the complexities of agricultural development and land ownership. He criticized traditional statistical methods, arguing that they often resulted in meaningless numbers that failed to reveal the true nature of agricultural evolution. Attention to detail and critical analysis. Lenin was known for his rigorous and critical analysis of economic data. He would recalculate statistics, compare various sources, and note any discrepancies or gaps in the data. An example is his critique of the German economist K. Clock a study on small-scale agricultural production, where Lenin recalculated the figures and noted several insufficiencies in the data, particularly the lack of information on livestock feed and labor costs. Lenin's Systematic Approach Lenin's approach to studying agricultural systems was grounded in a desire for complete and accurate data. He viewed this as essential for debunking bourgeois and petty bourgeois economic theories. His work revealed the flaws in bourgeois political economy and exposed the universal tendencies of capitalist agriculture across the world. Significance The result of Lenin's studies on the agrarian question was the publication of three Lenin collections totaling 85 printed sheets. These works have become invaluable for understanding his method of theoretical research. Lenin's thorough approach and commitment to the dialectical method made his contributions to the agrarian question a powerful defense of Marxism against its critics. Lenin's approach to critics of Marxism. He meticulously analyzed the works of Marxism's opponents, particularly those who revised or distorted Marx's ideas, like Bulgakov and Chernov. Lenin not only scrutinized their tables and figures but also paid close attention to their quotations and references, exposing deliberate misquotations and distortions. Attention to detail, Lenin exemplified extraordinary thoroughness by cross-referencing sources cited by these authors, verifying data, and checking quotations. His detailed notes and calculations reflected his intent to catch any error, fraud, or misrepresentation such as in his analysis of Bulgakov's work where he uncovered errors in data presentation and quotations. Bulgakov's Distortion of Data Lenin exposed Bulgakov's misuse of data from the bourgeois economist Benzinga, showing how Bulgakov misrepresented tables on farm sizes and debt, deliberately misleading readers. Lenin highlighted Bulgakov's confusion between the size of land holdings and percentage of debt, as well as his misquotation of Marx. Lenin's Response to Misrepresentations Lenin was particularly concerned with critics of Marx, identifying where they deliberately took Marx's quotes out of context or mistranslated them to support their arguments. In his 1901 book, The Agrarian Question and the Critics of Marx, Lenin documented several such instances of manipulation, including Bulgakov's methodical work process. Lenin planned and outlined his works with precision, preparing multiple versions of his outlines and summaries before writing. His book, The Agrarian Question and the Criticism of Marx, underwent four versions of plans and summaries, each one progressively more detailed, with clear references to sources and quotations. For versions of the plan, Lenin initially divided his book into three sections. An analysis of Marx's critics, factual data countering these critics, and distortions of Marx and Engels by them. Each section was outlined with instructions on the material and sources to be used. Lenin then reworked these plans into detailed summaries, providing chapter outlines, selected quotations, and references to sources. Lectures on the Agrarian Question 
In 1903, Lenin delivered four lectures in Paris on the Marxist view of the agrarian question in Europe and Russia. Although only brief notes of these lectures survive, they left a profound impact on his audience. Lenin reviewed both old and new materials and produced a thorough summary to prepare for these lectures, despite already being deeply familiar with the subject. Structure of Lenin's Lectures The first lecture focused on the general Marxist theory of the agrarian question, drawing on the material he had collected to critique the bourgeois character of Marxism's critics. The next two lectures addressed the issue of small and large-scale production in agriculture, refuting attempts by the critical school to conceal the exploitation of small producers. The final lecture centered on the Russian agrarian question, detailing the disintegration of the peasantry and the class struggle in the countryside. Lenin's methodical study of the peasantry. Lenin applied a detailed method of grouping to study the breakdown of the peasantry, showing how this was the basis for understanding the agrarian question in Russia. He contrasted the RSDLP's agrarian program with the socialist revolutionary program, which he critiqued as incoherent and reactionary. Simplicity and clarity in propaganda. Lenin's lectures on the agrarian question emphasized the need for maximum Marxism, maximum popularity, and simplicity. He aimed to make even complex ideas like the agrarian question accessible to his audience, elevating their understanding of Marxist theory through clear, simple explanations. Lenin's popular essay on imperialism. Lenin's essay Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism is a key work that armed advanced workers with a clear understanding of society's development under imperialism. Despite being labeled as a popular essay, it represents Lenin's profound research on expanding Marxist economic theory in the imperialist era. Scientific continuation of Marx's work. Lenin's work is a continuation of Marx's capital, but adapted to the new historical conditions of imperialism. It provides a theoretical framework that goes beyond Marx and Engels' analysis, which was based on pre-monopoly capitalism. Lenin's contributions to Marxism. Stalin recognized Lenin's innovations, especially his analysis of the law of uneven development, which opened the possibility of socialism's victory in a single country. This contrasted with the earlier Marxist belief that socialism would triumph simultaneously across all civilized nations. New theory of socialist revolution. Lenin's theory of socialism's potential victory in one country was revolutionary. This idea, outlined in his 1905 work Two Tactics of Social Democracy in the Democratic Revolution, became the basis for a new approach to socialist revolution, differing from the pre-imperialist views. Practical Implementation by Stalin After Lenin's death, Stalin expanded on and implemented Lenin's theory of socialist revolution. Stalin's leadership, combined with the Bolshevik Party's efforts, led to the construction of socialism in the USSR. Lenin's preparatory work Lenin's preparation for his book on imperialism, later compiled as notebooks on imperialism, involved intensive research on the development of capitalism during imperialism and the impending world war. His efforts were part of a larger strategy to prepare the proletariat for revolution. Collection of factual data Lenin gathered extensive factual data from various libraries in Switzerland, moving between cities, Bern, Zurich, Geneva, to study imperialism. His knowledge of American agricultural statistics also played a role in shaping his analysis. Lenin's letter to Gorky. In a letter from January 1916, Lenin outlined his goal to present new data on American capitalism in a clear and accessible way, aiming to popularize Marxism for a growing readership in Russia. Lenin's lifelong study of capitalism. Lenin accumulated a vast amount of knowledge on capitalism's development over 23 years, including studies in areas beyond agriculture. He consistently updated his understanding of imperialism's changes compared to Marx's time. Comparisons with Marx and Engels. Like Marx, who was never surprised by events due to his constant study of history, Lenin and Stalin also continuously collected data on economic developments, which informed their revolutionary strategies. The Leninist-Stalinist method. Both Lenin and Stalin engaged in tireless study of the global economy, imperialist policies, and the labor movement in various countries. This thorough understanding of world affairs was the foundation of the Bolshevik Party's political strategy. Imperialist War to Civil War Despite being physically distant, Lenin in exile and Stalin in the Turkensk region, both leaders independently came to the same conclusion during World War I. 
the imperialist war needed to be transformed into a civil war, which ultimately led to the October 1917 revolution and the Bolshevik victory. Lenin's study of imperialism dedicated his life to studying imperialism in both economics and politics, had extensive historical knowledge and maintained scientific integrity in his work. For each new work, he rigorously studied all related materials, documents, and theories. Preparation for work on imperialism Began preparation for his work on imperialism in January 1916. Reviewed his prior notes, extracts, and bibliography, while also studying new literature. In his Notebooks on Imperialism, he referenced 148 books and 232 articles in various languages. War of 1914 to 1918. Lenin described it as an imperialist war aimed at the division of the world and redistribution of colonies and financial capital. Emphasized that the war's class nature wasn't evident in diplomatic history, but rather through analysis of the economic positions of the ruling classes in the warring powers. Objective analysis requirement. Insisted on the necessity of using comprehensive data on the foundations of economic life across all powers. Refuted reliance on selective examples, instead calling for the analysis of the complete economic and political conditions. Marxist analysis methodology. Required analysis of all interconnected facts, considering their historical development. The distinction between essential and secondary facts is critical, with an objective criterion necessary for evaluation. Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. In this work, Lenin presented two summary tables based on extensive data. Territorial division of the world showed the colonial possessions of the great powers. Railway network demonstrated the uneven development and monopolistic capitalism's global impact predicting the inevitability of imperialist wars. Capitalism's global impact. Lenin's tables revealed that a small fraction of wealthy states exploited the world by clipping coupons, underscoring the predatory nature of capitalism. Lenin's factual analysis. His preparation involved processing vast geographical and statistical material to create detailed tables of colonial possessions and historical development. Divided imperialist states into three groups, categorizing colonial powers and their populations. Lenin's critical approach. In his research, Lenin critically analyzed and assessed the authors he referenced. He gave political evaluations of bourgeois economists, recognizing valuable insights but exposing ideological biases. For example, he criticized Hobson for his social reformism but acknowledged his thorough analysis of imperialism. Critical reviews of other works, Lenin was critical of certain authors, such as McKay, whom he described as reactionary but still used their data for factual extraction. He provided both factual references and political assessments from various sources. Synchronization tables. Lenin used these tables to compare global events, focusing on wars, diplomacy, colonial policy, economic policy, labor movements, revolutionary movements, and more. The study of such synchronized data helped Lenin understand the emergence and development of the imperialist era and its impact on political life, wars, and international crises. Lenin studied the history of feudalism and the rise of capitalism, drawing parallels to Marx's late-life work in his chronological extracts. Lenin compiled a detailed table covering key international political and economic crises from 1870 to 1871 onward, revealing the predatory nature of the great powers. These crises involved conflicts over colonial expansion and were driven by secret treaties and diplomatic agreements, which were kept hidden from the general public. Examples of these events include January 10, 1891. England issued an ultimatum to Portugal to divide Africa. 1889. England, Germany, and the United States plundered the Samoan Islands. 1898. The Spanish-American War led to the plunder of Cuba and the Philippines. 1899. Germany, England, and the United States divided Samoa. 1900. Major powers strangled China, with coordinated actions by Germany, Russia, the U.S., Japan, England, and France. 1903. Germany, England, and Italy bombed Venezuela to extract debts. 1904. England and France divided Africa and prepared for war with Germany. 1907. England and Russia divided Persia, Afghanistan, and Tibet, preparing for future conflict with Germany. 
1908. Japan and the U.S. agreed to guarantee their Pacific possessions. 1910. Russia and Japan signed a treaty exchanging Korea for Mongolia. 1911. England and Japan reached an agreement, with England staying neutral in a potential U.S.-Japan. Conflict. 1914. Russia signed a treaty with Mongolia, exploiting the country. Lenin's table illustrated the violent and exploitative nature of international imperialism, forming the basis for his theory in imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. His notebooks on imperialism span 47 printed sheets, and a deep study of them reveals Lenin's rigorous method of scientific analysis, helping understand economics, history, and international politics.